Welcome, forensics. Welcome to day five of online learning. It's Friday, April 3rd, and you've made it. You've made it through five days of me talking to you via a green dot. Hello, green dot. Uh, I hope you in, have enjoyed your week. It's, it's been a, you know, it's been a little weird, but you know, it's a new normal. Um, still, I'm recording this right after our session today. So that was today's still April fool. So it was pretty funny. I really needed that laugh. I think, yeah, I did tear up because I was giggling so much. So thank you for that. And <laughs> yeah, it was funny. So let's start. Okay, so let me share my screen with you. All right, like I said, it's Friday, um, April 3rd. The daily tasks, I wanna remind you, is RenWeb. Um, go to RenWeb for your student uh, information. All of the links are there. I don't just go to the Google Classroom because I don't have due dates there and you can't see the overall thing, really. Um, so make sure you're going to RenWeb as well. Uh, you're watching the video, taking notes on this lesson, and then you will upload that for me. Um, attend the uh, Q&A session from 2.30 Remember, it's um, you need to be there. Uh, the only reason not to be there is if there is a problem with technology. So if there is, you need to let me know. Make sure you com any completed assignments go to the Google Classroom. If you need any help, um, please email me and I'm available to help. These are the things you need to know, need to have. Make sure you've got your highlighters um, because we are highlighting. Um, notes and colored pencils, I think today, actually today I said, we'll highlight in the Q and A. I had forgotten that if you've, you know, you've watched Thursday now, we did highlight in that, that I forgot. So, yep, old. All right, so this is remembering how to take notes. Hey, turn in the notes, take a photo of them and upload them. Um, I'm not gonna have those um, slides next week because I figure you've got it. Okay, so we're gonna continue on talking about firearms and today we're gonna continue on talking with ammunition and more specifically cartridge cases, which leads us to our first note, capital C, cartridge cases. And you can see how to spell it at the top of here, capital C cartridge cases. Okay, parentheses, individual characteristic, close parentheses. Individual characteristic, close parentheses. Okay, so with cartridge cases, they're gonna show us a lot. And in our crime that we have, one way or the other, I hope to have this crime, whether or not we have a truncated version in May, uh, somehow, it just depends on how much, I don't know, I brought my, all of my crime stuff with me just in case. Um, and, or it happens in the summer for those of you that can come. I don't know, I'll figure something out. I'm just really hopeful. Uh, so with cartridge cases, it's gonna tell us a lot. And like we were talking yesterday that the gun puts its own fingerprint, specific gun, specific fingerprint. And so that print is actually placed on the um, cartridge case. And so we can identify gun. We don't need the bullet. We can use the cartridge case to do the same thing, which, you know, cartridge cases are left all the time and people don't remember to pick them up or they don't remember that their gun throws the cartridge case. Uh, so it gives us a lot of information. It's helped solve a lot of crimes. So we're going to write number one. Uh, the cartridge case makes contact with the gun. The cartridge case makes contact with the gun and impressions are made and they're therefore used for comparison. And impressions are made and are therefore used for comparison. Number two, definitions. Number two, definitions. So we're gonna deal with some definitions now. Um, those of you that um, have some knowledge of guns um, probably know some of this, and uh, a lot of us that don't have knowledge of guns need to know this so you know where the impressions are coming from. 
Okay, and so we're going to, if you can look at this bullet, you can see there's scraping and scratches and dents all over this thing, which is going to tag a certain uh, firearm. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is a breech block. So that is little a, breech block, and you can see how to spell it. Once you write breech block, you're gonna take your ghost writer and highlight breech block. Once you've highlighted that, we're gonna write a star, and we're gonna write that it, star, rear part of the firearm barrel. Rear part of the firearm barrel. Now you could, instead of firearm, if you wanna put gun slash rifle, you can, but saying firearm is easier for me, so, or, you, you know, whatever's easiest for you. So it's the rear part of the firearm barrel. So here's the breech block, that's where the ammunition goes. And so the breech block um, is going to actually leave a, some, a scratching on the upper part of the casing and the back part of the casing that we'll look at. And so, whoops, let's look at that now. So here is the back of a casing. And I know that because of this right here in the middle is from the pin hitting the back of the cartridge to force the ammunition out. And so this scratching is the breech block, breech block impression. And that is really important. And so what's gonna happen is again, if they um, have the gun, they were able to shoot the gun uh, and compare the cartridge from the gun they shot as the exemplar to the cartridge they get at the crime scene. And it's just like we were, show, we were looking at yesterday where you compare the uh, scrapings and that's what we do. We're gonna look at the back and you kinda, with the comparison microscope, and you just turn it until they match. Um, or you would put, uh, if we're just using, that's if we use the comparison microscope, but most of the time, because there's one comparison microscope and there's several, or each one of you have a dissecting microscope, you take a picture of the cartridge casing close up and you print it, you take a picture of the, the uh, crime scene cartridge casing, take a picture and you just take the papers and you turn one paper until you can get something hopefully to match up. And, uh, again, I'm still looking for the lab to be able, uh, virtual lab to be able to do that for you because it is really interesting and kind of exciting when it happens. But again, there's no replacing when it in the in the actual crime when you do it physically yourself. Okay, uh, let's move on to little b extractor. Little b extractor. Okay, so the extractor is what it sounds like. It's gonna um, release the cartridge casing. And when it does that, it's actually gonna scrape and scratch the, the bullet casing. So extractor, star, mechanism used to remove a cartridge from the firearm. Mechanism used to remove a cartridge from the firearm. Okay, so I forgot to tell you to highlight. So take your ghost writer and highlight extractor. Okay, and as you can see, there's an extractor impression. Um, we're gonna look here and you can see the extractor marks are more like scratches, but on this previous picture, it was kind of like this. But most of the time we're going to see scratches because what it's going to do is um, you pull it, pull the extractor and it kind of lifts the casing out so that the user can pull the casing themselves from the gun. And in the Q&A today, I will, um, if, I'm hoping that's not erroneous because I've done a lot of research because, on this to make sure I'm not saying the wrong thing here. But um, if I am, um, help, me, help me out and help everyone out in um, class because every time you, you as students have told me something, I write it down and, you know, make my notes more specific. All right, so next is ejector. So this little c, ejector. Little c, ejector. Star. Mechanism that throws cartridge away from firearm. Mechanism that throws cartridge away from firearm. Okay, so before we get any deeper there, I want you to take your ghostwriter and highlight ejector. 
Okay, so this is different. It's actually going to, you shoot the gun, it throws the casing from the gun. And so here it's going to make a mark on the side of the casing. It just kind of latches on and uh, it indents on the casing. And so you can see an ejector mark. And when you go close in on it, that ejector, it actually leaves um, scrapings behind too, or scratches behind. And so when you look, here's the ejector impression. So you would again, take a picture and, or on the microscope and roll it until it um, matches. And this is a pretty good match here. Okay, let's move on to little D firing pin. Little D firing pin. Once you write that, take your ghostwriter and highlight firing pin. So this is the thing that when you pull the trigger, it hits the back of the cartridge casing and with the gunpowder in there, it creates a spark. The gunpowder explodes. That explosion pushes the bullet down the rifle barrel and, it's the, and all of um, the valleys and the grooves spin or the land and blah, 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 the lands just spin it and it comes out. And so that firing pin is what starts the explosion and it leaves a pretty good indentation uh, into the casing. So let's write one with a parenthesis. Trigger releases firing pin to strike the bullet casing. Trigger releases firing pin to strike bullet casing. Trigger releases firing pin to strike bullet casing. Okay, and so you can see here is where it hits and then there is the box around here is the scraping. So this on the left is from the crime scene and over here on the right is the exemplar. And you can see they take in a close up picture or a close up view of it. And they are, and you see that you can match up the, the scratches. So it's pretty cool. All right, and that leads us to number two with the parenthesis, causes bullet to fire and leave. Firearm causes bullet to fire and leave, oh gosh, I just said that crazy. Let's try this again. Causes bullet to fire and leave the gun and cartridge behind. Causes bullet to fire and leave the gun or cartridge behind. Causes the bullet to fire and leave the gun or cartridge behind. Sorry about that, guys. I got my merds all mixed up again. All right, number three. All of the above leave their individual impressions on the cartridge and are used to link gun to bullet. All of the above leave their individual impressions on the cartridge and are used to link gun to bullet. All of the above leave their individual impressions on the cartridge and all, all of the above leave their individual impressions on the cartridge and are used to link gun to bullet. Yeah, okay. All right. That leads us to Roman numeral two. Oh, well, let's write Roman numeral two, gunpowder residue. Roman numeral two, gunpowder residue. So let's take a look. So there's some head stamps on the back of the bullet um, or the bullet casing and so on. And you know, you don't have to have the same, just the same, um, the correct bullet for that specific gun, but they don't all have to be the same bullet from the same place, okay? Okay, so um, we wrote Roman numeral two, gunpowder residue. We're gonna do capital A, distance determination. Capital A, distance determination. And so now there's, if you look at this picture, there's so much energy coming out of the gun and it actually brings gunpowder with it. And so if you get gunpowder on the target it means you're you're close close up you're not shooting from you know across the street you're pretty close up and so the amount of gunpowder on um a person or the object uh whatever received the bullet um can tell you the distance okay so um let's write number one uses powder uses powder, P-O-W-D-E-R, -O -W -W -E uses powder patterns, or how powder spreads onto a target, 
uses powder patterns or how powder spreads onto a target to determine the distance between firearm and target. Uses powder patterns or how powder spreads onto a target to determine the distance between firearm and target. So that's the fancy book way of saying if you got stuff on you, if you got gunpowder on you, you're pretty close up. So we can tell the distance. And number two, it's useful to help determine if the gunshot was self-inflicted, self-defense, or a crime. Useful to help determine if a gunshot was self-inflicted, self-defense, or a crime. So, um, if someone's, I, I wasn't there, or, and well, I'm gonna say that again. Uh, if someone says it was self-inflicted and there's no gunpowder on the person, then um, something's up there and you need to check into what's really going on. So, well, it's Friday, so I'm gonna end this a little bit um, quicker than normal. So make sure you're at the Q&A from 2.30, 2.55. Don't forget your case study is due today by the Q&A time at 2.30. And you're gonna turn your bell ringer in for this week. It needs to be in by five this week only because I was unsure how fast the turnaround would be um, for getting that in. So um, this week it's by five. I think the next week's, I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but I already put five on the uh, Ren, on RenWeb, so I wasn't gonna change it. So this week your bell ringer needs to be in by five, but in the weeks to come, I don't see it being a problem that you can't just take a picture and upload it. So anyway, we'll see. All right, guys, that ends our, uh, our time this week. So I hope you have a great weekend. See you later.